Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, newly elected Congressman Alan Lowenthal, in his first extended TV interview since taking office, as we continue our 21st anniversary year. Closed captioning provided by Scan Health Plan. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're delighted you're joining us tonight. We are honored to have as our guest for the entire show, the newly elected congressman from the 47th Congressional District, the Honorable Alan Lowenthal. Alan, welcome back to Straight Talk. It's great to be back, Art. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. Alan, uh, we're taping this show on March 1st, which is the date of the sequester uh, deadline. And uh, ironically, when you were on our show in the debate with your opponent running for Congress, uh, we referenced uh, uh, a bumper sticker from a group known as Lo No Labels. Right. And the bumper sticker said, stop fighting, start fixing. Right. And you actually asked me for that and held it up and right. you talked about your experience of reaching across the right. aisle. Now we're watching in Washington as these sequesters are about to take place, right. $85 billion of automatic cuts, half right. to defense, half to non-defense, and a lot of the country is saying, what is going on? It's so am I. Uh, <laughs> in that, um, you know, I'm a new member. I uh, joined the No Labels group. In Washington, we call the offshoot of No Labels uh, uh, the problem solvers. There are 18 Republicans and 20 Democrats, many of us new members, who've joined the group to try to work together. Uh, but the sequester uh, uh, is a very difficult thing. Uh, I did not personally would have liked to have seen a more balanced approach of how you do cuts and additional revenues, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, now we have to come together to see how we can make sure that the cuts that have been implemented are done in the fairest way and that there's more flexibility in doing those. But you would agree that this is no way to run a railroad, to it's just a horrible way to do straight railroad. percentages uh, of everything except, for, of course, for Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, those are not touched. Right. But uh, to, it's a meat cleaver approach. Right. It's like we can't trust ourselves. That's right. And, and part of it is, you know, there are forces within both parties that did not want to see this change for different reasons. There were forces within the Republican Party that said, well, you know, if this is the, if the president wants to have additional revenues, at least this has no additional revenues, so we'll support this. And there were forces within the Democratic Party, some folks, who said that uh, uh, this is a way to get large cuts in defense that we couldn't get in any other way. And so they were, fo so there were uh, mostly so on the extremes, considerations mostly there. on the extremes. The yeah. larger groups in the middle really kind of got caught up in, I think, a ship that had left the port a long time ago. And so it was very difficult to reverse its course. And I think that people know, and you know, the members know, especially the new members, that uh, it's going to take a a lot of pulling together to begin to it's change It's things like this that give politics a bad name. And, and many view the system in Washington as dysfunctional, and certainly, you, myself included, view Sacramento as dysfunctional. And it is dysfunctional. And, and, and people are struggling with their own problems, their own jobs, their own economy, and they see something like this because the groups can't get together that's going to wreak all kinds of destruction and uh, dislocation on the economy and on homes and and uh, so why can't they get their act together and I, maybe you answered it but uh, it's I, I th it's very difficult when people come from purely ideological points of view and are so committed to those and think that they have the truth on their side and really do not reach out to work together and I think that 
Uh, there's much of that in Washington, and, and there were also just some base, those differences, there are some basic differences. One group wants no all cuts in one group and a more austerity are mostly concerned about the fact that there's a spending issue problem, and the other group uh, wants to have a balanced approach. And so sometimes they're just in conflict and you have to accept that. I've spoken to our mayor about this and also our county supervisor, and it seems to many of us that uh, when you're at the local level or the county level, you can't afford to be an ideologue. You have real problems and you have to face real solutions right away. As we move further and further towards Washington, D.C., there's this luxury of being an ideologue because you're not faced immediately with the consequences of your actions. And we'd like to see, I think a lot of the country would like to see less ideologues and more problem solvers. And I think many of the new members on both parties uh, the 70 or so new members uh, heard that loud and clear when they went to Washington. And that's why we've kind of formed this problem solving group and we'd yeah. like to be able to influence the process. Uh, and we're going to continue to try to influence the process. And that is to sit down and resolve these conflicts. Well, by the time this show airs in uh, mid-March, maybe we'll see the results of those efforts. But in the meantime, putting the country through something like this and the more recent fiscal cliffhanger and that kind of stuff. It's, it's a luxury which the average man and woman really uh, can't afford while the ideologues go through their uh, uh, stalemates in government. I, I, as a new member, I have the same sense of frustration. It is not why I was elected. It's not what I want to do. I have spoken out to try to bring, I've joined groups to try to bring yes. us together. You do what you can. And, and uh, some of it, as I said, is based upon ideology. Others, uh, other points are that people really have clear differences. And uh, some of those differences are hard to reconcile and without right. passing blame on either side. Okay, I know you were appointed to the uh, House Foreign Relations Committee. Yes. Congratulations for that prestigious appointment. In the next segment, we'll be talking about foreign affairs. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Supported by Edison International. Californians are getting to be old hands at year-round energy conservation. Part of our special awareness of the resources we all depend on, we're making the change to energy-efficient light bulbs, keeping warm weather thermostats set to a comfortable 78 degrees, and giving major appliances the afternoon off. Because when it comes to energy conservation, it all adds up. Life powered by Edison. In today's world, everything's connected. From the workplaces that support us, to the homes that welcome us, to the trees and wildlife habitats that remind us how important our environment is. When a bird lands on a branch, and in the midst of a busy day, we stop to watch. It makes us realize we're all in the same boat. The Port of Long Beach welcomes this world with open arms, an environmental policy that's second to none, and a commitment to shaping a vibrant community. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come. 